Hello everyone, it's Elena and I'm back with another video and today I wanted to talk to you guys about my reading technique for legal cases. Last week I shared my reading technique for academic writing and as I pointed out it is not really working for case law because cases are structured very differently so I thought today I'd show you guys how I read legal cases. Now before we get started I just quickly want to say that I'm using the Fire Brigade's Union case as an example and I'm going to put the full citation of the case in the info box below if you guys are interested. And yeah, let's get into the reading technique. Now, before we get into the technique, there's a really important distinction that we have to make. There are reported cases and unreported cases. Reported cases are any cases that have been reported in the law reports and these cases are your best friends because they have a head note. So this is what a head note looks like and it's basically just a short summary that was written by a law reporter and it should tell you who the parties are, what was the main issue at hand and what was decided. Now one thing that's really important to keep in mind with head notes is that not all head notes are created equally. Some of them contain the most important reasons for a decision and really give you a very, very good summary, but some of them don't. So don't treat a head note as a sufficient summary for your exam or supervision. You really need to read the entire case first and then you can decide if that head note is sufficient. Only treat the head note as an introduction to the case, but don't think if I just read the head note I'm going to be fine because usually your supervisor will be able to tell if you just read the head note because you are missing some details of the case that were probably relevant for the decision making of the court. So the key difference between reported and unreported cases is that head note. So if you're reading an unreported case then there is no head note because it wasn't reported by a law report so you're just gonna have to find out all the facts through the judgment which is usually pretty easy because judges tend to give you all the facts in the first few paragraphs of their judgment but judges include all the facts that they can find about that case in their judgment. So they also include a lot of facts that aren't necessarily relevant to you. So for example, when exactly did something happen? Like at 11.15 a.m. You don't need to know that for your exam. That's not relevant for you. Um, but it's still included in the judgment, but obviously a head note would not include something like that. So that's why head notes are really, really useful, but don't treat them as a sufficient summary. So yeah, now that we got that distinction out of the way, let's get into the reading technique. My first step when reading a legal case is to read the head note and to then make a diagram out of all the facts so that I can refer to that diagram as I'm reading the case. Now the reason I'm doing this is to, you know, make sure that first of all I understand what facts are relevant, secondly I know what the main issues of the case are, and lastly so that I have something that I can refer back to as I go through the case. Facts of cases can become pretty complicated, I think anybody who has read the HS2 case can relate, and um, it is just really important that you are on top of your facts. You really need to understand what are the different legislations that are relevant, how are they affecting the fact pattern that I'm looking at, and what is the issue that has been created and that is related to these legislations. And it's really important that you get the facts, because if you don't even understand what the issue at hand is and what the situation looks like, then you won't be able to understand the legal reasoning that then decided about that situation. So for me personally, a little flowchart or diagram is really, really useful just to see what the situation looked like and to understand what the issue is. So here's the little diagram that I drew for the Fire Brigade's Union case and it's just really, really simple, just saying, okay, this is the legislation, this is what the legislation introduced, this is the power that the Secretary of State got through the legislation, this is what the Secretary of State actually did, and then these are the two issues that are created through it. And that's it. If you guys are interested in that little flowchart, I'm going to link it in the info box below, but it's basically just a little summary of the case and the main facts and then the issues that were created through the scenario. And that's just something that's really, really useful to have while you're reading a case because it is the bigger picture summarized in a flowchart and you can just always look back at it when you're getting lost in the details of a case so that you can more easily decide where these details belong in that bigger scenario and whether they're really relevant for the decision that you're analyzing. Now that you have your little diagram, ask yourself what what is it that you want to get from this case? Are you interested in the ratio, so that is the main legal reasoning behind the decision of the court? Or are you more interested in obiter, so that is anything that is not part of that main legal argument? Or are you maybe interested in both? So if you're only interested in the ratio of a case, which is very likely if you're reading a case in tort or criminal law, then it is usually enough to read the leading judgment. So the leading judgment is the judgment of that judge with which every other judge who belonged to the majority agreed. You can find out who that judge is usually by reading the end of the head note or you can just read the judgments and they will usually tell you right at the beginning if they agree with another judge and so you know where to go for the leading judgment. Now sometimes you may get lucky, especially in lower courts when there is only one judgment 
but the higher the court, especially up in the House of Lords or now the Supreme Court, there tend to be multiple judgments. So it's really useful if you can just go to the leading judgment and you don't need to read through all of them because they often repeat the same things about the fact patterns, etc. But then they may disagree about legal reasoning. But if they agreed with another judge, then you know where to find the ratio of a case. And if you're just looking for the ratio, the leading judgment should be enough. Now it's really important that you really ask yourself what you need to get from that case because if you don't need to just get the ratio then you need to read all of the judgments. It's highly likely that you are looking for more than the ratio if you're reading a case in constitutional law because in constitutional law there is a lot of debate about obiter so you're probably going to have to read the entire case. It's also really important to know that if you are looking for obiter in a case don't rely on the head note for any information about the obiter because the head note summarizes the key facts and the key thing about any case is its ratio. So the head note is usually not going to make a note about the obiter. So then you really have to go through every judgment and read through it and find out if there's anything that is interesting for the particular thing that you are studying. Now if you're just looking for the ratio and you've read the leading judgment, then I recommend summarizing the ratio in one sentence. And if you can do that, then you know you've understood the ratio. It may take up to two sentences, but it really shouldn't take more than two sentences. And if you are able to summarize that legal argument in two sentences, then you know you've understood it. So that's why I'd recommend keeping it really, really short in order to ensure that you've actually understood it. If you have to read all the judgments, then I'd recommend making a short note about the key argument of a judge in one to two sentences after reading each judgment. And that becomes quite easy if you have a diagram because you can also draw into your diagram and you know see, okay, Judge A maybe argues that this affected this and that's why this is the outcome for him. But Judge B sees it differently, so this is for him how the legislations interact and this is the outcome. So it's really handy if you have this diagram because you can just quickly look and see how different judges interpret the legislation and see its effects on the scenario. I recommend trying to keep it as short as possible and I would always recommend one to two sentences per judgment and that's it. Even if you're looking for obiter, I would recommend keeping it as short as you can. So try to give yourself one to two sentences but not more and just try to summarize anything that was important in that judgment in those one to two sentences and write it into your notes. And once you're done with all of that, you should create a little note where you just quickly write down the level of the court because that's really important for how authoritative that decision is. And then what were the main facts of this case? So what is relevant? What do you need to know about the facts of this case when you're thinking back of it when you're revising for an exam? And then write down what was held. So what is the legal reasoning? What decision was made? And if there was any important obiter or any interesting dissents, note it down there and that's it and that's what that can look like and I'd really recommend keeping it as short as you can and I'd recommend imagining that you're already writing your notes for your exam because by the time you're gonna get to revising for your exam it's not gonna be very helpful to you if you have a few pages on every case that you've read because you're probably gonna have read over a hundred cases at that point and if you have a few pages on every case that you read then you're not gonna get done with your revision by the time your exam comes around. So keep it as short as you can and only put the most important things into it so that you could revise this and be done with your revision about that case for this exam. And by thinking about that, you're gonna keep your notes really concise and only focus on the most important things. So that's why I'd always recommend thinking of your notes as the final notes that you're gonna have for your exam. They may not be the final notes for your exam, but it's just useful to have that mindset because it just prevents you from noting down any irrelevant details that by the time you get to revising you're just gonna ask yourself why on earth did I write this down? It's really irrelevant. Um, so by thinking that you just, you know, keep yourself focused on the most important things. And yeah, that is my reading technique for legal cases. I hope you guys found this video helpful. And I just quickly wanted to say that there's something really exciting happening because I actually started a second channel called Elena Makes Sense of Law and it's gonna be linked in the info box below and in the end card. And it's a channel about law. So I'll be talking about undergraduate law topics to hopefully help other law students with their revision for exams. So if you guys have a legal topic that you're unclear on and that you need to revise for your exams, let me know. I'd be really happy to make a video about it on that channel. And the first videos are coming out today Day, so it would mean a lot to me if you guys would check out the channel and yeah that's it for today thank you guys so much for watching this video have a nice day bye